Hi, I'm Michael Wilde, this is Mari 4.5, and today we're gonna to be looking at the new material system inside of Mari 4.5. So Mari 4.5 has added a new material system, which is really great, because some other pieces of software like Substance have had it for a while now, and it's a really great workflow, and it can really help speed you up. So what we're gonna look at today is in kind of three parts, we're gonna be looking at creation of a material inside of Mari, we're gonna look at how to merge multiple materials together. And then finally, we're gonna look at using the ingest tool, which is a great way to batch import materials. So I'm gonna be using the node graph for this video. If you haven't used the node graph before, then I've got a video on how to get up and running with that pretty quickly and in depth look at that. So check out this YouTube channel for more. So I'm gonna be starting off with the material that I made from Substance Designer. I'm gonna be taking the tiles from that, importing them and then creating material with that. You could use Megascans or any other websites online that provide you with materials. There are also some that Mari has inbuilt in its shelf, but we're gonna look at those a little bit later. So let's begin. So first up, we're gonna to need to create a material node. So if I press tab in my node graph, I'm gonna type in material. It's gonna bring up this option box. I'm gonna create a principal BRDF and just click okay on that. So like a normal node, you would press one or any number on your keyboard to view it. So I'm gonna do that now and see what happens. Because it's a material and we've got multiple channels, then I can't just view all of them at once. So what I need to do is I need to plug them into a shader. So I'm gonna take this material and I'm gonna plug the base color into the base color. And as you can see, it lines them up all for me, which is great. So it means I don't have to do them all by hand because that'd be super annoying. Um, if I wanna unconnect them all at once, then I can just take one off and then it disconnects them all. That can be slightly frustrating if you're just trying to get rid of one. So if you hold shift on any of them, so say for example, I didn't want this metallic, I can press shift, disconnect that, and now the metallic is no longer hooked up. But I'm gonna bring that back because I want them all. Cool, and now I'm gonna view the shader and what it will do is it will show me all of these channels at once. This looks like crap though. So what we need to do is we need to set up this material because at the moment there's absolutely no information in there. So I need to dive into this material. So how do I do that? So to do that, you just need to control and double click on the material node. Sometimes it doesn't work on the first time. And you'll see it adds this little pop-up UI called material on your node graph. So you can just hop back and forward between your scene node graph and this specific material. So if we take a look inside of here, let's see what's going on. So we've got a base color, we've got a metallic, we've got a subsurface. So these are all kind of like channels um, that take an input. And then this input will be outputted from here into your scene. So what I need to do is I basically just need to plug in some information here, whether that be a tiled text or a triplanar, you could even use a color um, into the channels that I'm gonna use. And then Mari can then take that information out and use it as a material. So if I go to my image manager, you can see I've got some material images here. that I've, These are the ones from Substance. So I'm just gonna delete these and show you how I imported them. So we've got our project image manager, but now we've got this little one called material images. So I'm gonna put it in here just to keep things cleaner because I'm not gonna be using these ever for like painting through or projecting, which I would usually put in here. So my actual scene images that I might be using for painting, I put in here and then material images I can put in here and that's just a little bit cleaner. So I'm just gonna go open. I'm gonna select all these again, bring them in. And here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start laying these down. So I've got my base color here. I'm gonna hook that up to base. I've got a height, which I will use for displacement, even though I don't think there's any information in that. So actually, you know what, I'll put it in bump just because displacement will kill my computer. Uh, I've got a metallic. So let's pop that down. As you can see, my metallic is just black because this is a plastic material I'm making. So while I could hook this up, I could also just press tab like you do normally when you're creating a node and I could just go color. And then instead of using an image, which takes up um, memory, I could just put in a black color myself. And then that way, if I ever wanna change it, I can use that instead. I'm gonna leave this tile texture here just, just in case I were to change this later on then I can update that. And then I've got a normal map, which I'm gonna pop down, let's find normal. They're not in alphabetical order, unfortunately, so it makes it a little bit difficult to find. Let's have a look. There we go. Normal's there. And then finally, we've got our roughness. So where's roughness? So here's the material I created. It's a little bit too shiny. I don't, however, have a spec map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop down a color for that. And then this way, I can just control it from inside the material. I can choose how intense that spec is. So this is the great thing about materials is you can just jump in and you can play around with it quite a lot. If your maps weren't perfect, say for example, this roughness I didn't love, 
so I can just hop up. Where's my roughness? Uh, speed effect roughness. I could just press tab and add a levels here. And that way I can play with it on the fly. So for example, I wanted it to be a tighter spec or rougher. Then I can use that levels just to balance that out a little bit. But that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna get rid of this levels. I'm just gonna leave it like that. So if I hop back out now, um, I've got this material created. So I'm just gonna call this plastic, black plastic. Can't spell, let's try that again. Cool. So now I've got this material created. Because they're using tiled textures, I can hop back in and change these tiles separately. Say for example, I wanted this to be two tiling rather than one, then I can do that. Unfortunately though, I'd have to go through every single one and change them all. So I'm gonna pop this back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back up to my material and I'm gonna show a cool function of the materials now. So if I head to my node properties of this material and I click this P button, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me the parameters that I can promote into the node properties of this material to save me jumping in and out. So I'm gonna click pick I'm gonna go through all my tile textures. I probably should have named these to make it a bit cleaner so I know what is what. And I'm just gonna click the them all open, all the tiled. Then I'm gonna go through and holding control, I'm gonna click the U and the V repeat of all of them. And I'm gonna promote that so that I can change them all from outside of the material. So if I click okay, now you can see I've got the tiling repeat on all these tile textures, which is great but that means I still have to change them one at a time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link them. So I'm gonna press control again and select them all. Then I'm gonna go link and I'm gonna call this tile amount. Can't use a space, otherwise it wouldn't let me do it. So that's why I'm using camel case. I'm gonna click okay on that. And now you'll see I've got this tile amount there on this black plastic material. So say for example, I change this to 10. You'll see the specular roughness changing now. So this is really powerful because say for example, I did go back in and I change, so the, let's add that levels back into this roughness. Well, let's do a contrast actually. I'm gonna change, add a contrast node. So I can change this from within here if I need to. But if I hop back out, I'm gonna reset that to one. I'm gonna click on this, click this P again, and then pick contrast. I'm gonna change the contrast. I'm gonna add the contrast, click okay on that. And now from outside of this, I can change that contrast knob on the fly without having to always hop back into this material. So it's a really handy way of working and it just means that everything is on the surface. Materials are just great because you've got all your channels set up for you at once. I'm using this tiled texture and I can go in from there. This can be a great base texture and I can add grime to it, I can add dust, but it just means that initial setup is kind of done for me. So I think that about sums up making materials. So I spent a little bit longer refining this material now. I've given it a bit more detail, added a bump map, added a normal map, and I've just kind of got my channels in a better place. Preferring the specular now, I wasn't really liking the roughness, but this is kind of working for me as a basic sort of plastic material. What I've also done is I've created a basic brushed aluminium. So if I view that, so this is just with substance and I've brought those images in exactly the same way. And then I've created a metal as well, which if I view that, so this was based on the plastic that I made and I've just added some dots procedurally inside that material by just copying and pasting the material over and then changing a few things. If I jump into this plastic again, um, I'm using a pile of noise to get a bit more detail in there over the tile just to break it up a little bit. That's one of the good things about the materials is you can do anything inside of it. You can add procedural elements, you can add triplanar. It doesn't have to just be tiled images. So now that I've got those three materials together, I wanna to get them all on my mesh. At the moment, I've only got this one. So I need to merge them on top of each other. So usually with Mari, we'd use a merge node to merge multiple nodes together. However, because these materials have got multiple channels, we're gonna to need to use a different node this time. If I press tab and type in multi, then you can see we've now got this thing called the multi-channel merge node. And this is how you combine multiple materials together. So I'm gonna select the same principle BRDF shader that I've been using. I'm going to hit OK with that. And you can see now we've got this new multi-channel merge node, which looks kind of overwhelming to begin with, but if we break it down, it's really easy. It's the same as a normal merge node. So on the right, we've got our base. We've got all the channels that our material has, but on the left, so we've got the base and we've got the over, just like a normal merge node. So if I drop down a normal merge node, you can see we've got the base and the over. So all it's doing is it's merging 
two materials together. You've got the base normal one and then the over and at the bottom as well, we've got just like a normal merge node, we've got this mask node. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that with two of my materials. So I'm gonna start with this plastic one. I'm gonna drop that into the base. And then the next one up, I'm gonna use, let's go with this brushed metal. Just gonna move that over. And I'm gonna pop that in there. And because Mari auto fills all that in, so now I've connected that to my shader. I'm gonna move all these out of the way. Let's have a look what it's done. So if I view that, so at the moment, all it's doing is giving me this aluminium because I don't have a mask to tell it where this aluminium goes on top. At the moment, it's putting it over everything. So I have created a mask, handily, just telling it a few bits of metal that I want it to pick up. So I'm just gonna drop that in and let's review that. And voila, super simply, it has just added that brushed aluminium to these places on the mesh. So I've got this other metal that I wanna also use. So I'm gonna get everything together. Drop down another multi-channel merge node. And I'm gonna put this one as the base. I'm gonna put the output to my shader. And then this new material, this metal, I'm gonna to put to the over. Gonna move, delete this shader, too many lines. And also, conveniently, I made a mask earlier. So I want this metal to just be on the top flaps of this camera. I'm gonna drop that into the mask. Let's see how that works. Perfect, so that's done exactly what I wanted it to. So that's how you merge materials together inside of Mari 4.5. Um, so it's a little bit overwhelming because I've got all these lines, but as soon as you break it down, it's really, really simple. So what I usually do after this is I'm actually gonna disconnect these and I'm gonna put my channels here. So that way, when I export everything, I know that it's exporting what I'm viewing. So I'm just gonna hook everything up. I'll speed this up. So say for example, let's have a look at my metallic. So I've now got this exporting, this metallic channel is exporting exactly what the metallic output of all these materials are. And even better, so now say for example, I did not like this base color, as it is, I think it's a bit too plain, then I can start just using other nodes after this multi-channel merge node. So I could use a hue saturation value, I could multiply it over another tile or start painting some stuff, hand painting it on top of that. And then that's the way that you kind of work with materials that are a really good base, but they're never gonna get you the final result that you need. So you can just start adding detail from there. So say for example, you really like these materials that you've got, how do you get them into other scenes? So if I click on this plastic material that I've made, so if I click it and go to the node properties, you can see I've got this tab called node. So I can export it as a material and that basically just saves it to disk as a file somewhere. So if I wanted to use it in another Mari file or give it to somebody else to use, then I can do that. So if I click export as material, it's gonna give me this .mma file. So I'm gonna save this. I've already got it here. So I'm just gonna overwrite that and click save. And I'm gonna overwrite it, yep. And now that's saved it to disk. If I wanted to bring that shader back in, then I can do that in multiple ways. So I can right click and go to file import material and I can locate that. Click okay and now I've got that here. Or I can go to my shelf and under the personal tab, I can go file load items and I can import it like that. And that way it's not in your node graph but it is in your shelf. While we're looking at the shelf, so Mari actually comes with some pre-built materials. So if you go along to Mari materials, so these are some ones that you can use. You can use them as a base or say, for example, you wanted to just use them as they are. Then to do that, all you need to do is, let's say I like this leather one. I'm just gonna drop that in. And now I've got this material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop it into this merge node instead of this plastic. And so now I've got this leather material all over my mesh. And I can change the tile repeat, all those parameters that I promoted earlier when creating material, it's done it for me. So I've quickly made a new project here and I've done that so that we can look at working with materials inside of layers. So this is completely possible. I prefer the node graph and I'll explain why in a second. It's just important that when you create a new project that either you set Mari to add the defaults for all the channels that your materials are gonna have or you create them yourself inside of the channel palette. So that's important because this material has metallic data and normal map data, both of which don't come as default channels when you're creating a Mari project. 
So if I were to drag this material onto my mesh, but without those channels, then it's gonna have some problems interpreting that material because it doesn't have the channel to add the right information to. So let's have a look at how to apply a material in the layer system rather than in nodes. So what I can do is I can literally just go from my shelf, this material that I've created, and I can drag and drop this onto my mesh and it will apply it. So what we get here is a slightly different UI to normal layers. So this is almost like the multi-channel merge node that we saw inside of the node graph. But here we're getting a visual representation of every single channel that this material changes. So we've got base, metallic, specular, roughness, normal, and bump, all of which I set up. So I can turn these on and off if I want to. So say for example, I didn't want the base color data. So I can turn that off and I get all the information for all the other channels. So now if I wanted to merge over this second material, I could either drag and drop it on top and it would make another layer for a different material. Or one thing that's really cool about when you're working with layers, I can select certain parts of the mesh. So let's say I wanted this metal to go on this bit and this bit. I've currently got it selected to patches. So these patches, I wanna be filled with the brush metal that I made. So if I drag and drop that now, it's gonna apply the metal to only the parts of the mesh that I had selected. So there, you can see that's worked now. So I've got this mask, which I can then go in and paint and change if I didn't like that. But that's quite a cool, handy feature to just quickly drop stuff down quite quickly. And again, say for example, I didn't want the base color to be affected, I can turn that on and off. The reason I prefer working in the node graph with materials is I find it gives you an extra level of control. And if you're creating materials from scratch, then you can't do it in the layers anyway. That said, I think it's a really handy feature to know how to do. So that's why I just wanted to show you quickly how to work with layers and materials. So lastly, we're gonna have a look at the material ingest tool inside of Mari. And this is a handy way that Mari lets you import multiple images at once and create materials from them without you having to do it yourself. So to get to the Material Ingest tool, I'm gonna to go to Tools, Material Ingest, and it's gonna open up this UI. So I am using some images that I got free from Megascan. So if you go to megascans.com, they've got a selection of free ones. I don't know if they rotate, but the ones that I have from here are currently free. Maybe that will change in the future. But they've got a great selection of free and paid ones, um, and they're really high quality. So what this Material Ingest tool is gonna to do, it's gonna look through this folder here, and it's gonna look for all the images I have and then depending on their naming convention, it's gonna apply different images to different channels in the material. So I actually have already set this up myself because I tried to do it earlier and Mari crashed. That's a fun thing about materials is it does often like to crash. But fingers crossed that will change in newer versions. What I've done here is I've just gone through, so for base color, I know that I need to look for underscore albedo at the end of my image. And for specular, underscore specular. So all you need to do is just make sure that these are all named up to your naming conventions. I've also turned off some that I'm not looking for. So metallic, I could turn that back on. So say for example, I knew I had a metallic image I needed Mari to search for, then I can just change the naming convention I need it to look for here. But I'm gonna turn that off again because I'm not, I don't need it. So at the top we've got our shading model. So I'm using principle BRDF again. I'm gonna keep case sensitivity turned off just in case I've made any mistakes here. I don't think I have. And then at the bottom, we've got this file name template. We'll talk more about that in a second. We've got a search root path, so that's this folder. And then a material export path, which is this folder. And I'm gonna tell Mari to export these materials to disk. If you click on this, you can also build them in the project, but I'm gonna export them to disk and then I can export, import those at a later date if I wanted to. Then I've got procedural type, tiled. I could change that to triplanar if I want, but tiled is fine for me. And then I can also add them to my personal shelf, which I'm going to do. So this file name template, we've got this weird dollar sign. If I hover over this, then it tells me what this dollar sign means. It's basically a wildcard. So in this instance, it's gonna search for any name and then any stream, a stream being one of these texture channels. And anything with the same name is gonna be put into the same material. And then these streams have to be the same as this naming pattern that I've typed in myself that matches up with the images. So this should all be right now, and I've done .jpg um, because all of mine are JPEGs apart from the EXRs for displacement, but I've got two versions and just for time, I'm gonna keep it to JPEG. But if I wanted to, if I hover over this, so you can see we've got $ext. So if I had multiple extensions, which I do in this example, I could change this to $ext. Instead of searching for just JPEG, it would look for any image extension. Cool, so I'm just gonna click create material on that and let it calculate. So now it's completed, you can see in my personal shelf, it's created these materials for me. So now I'm just gonna quickly drag this onto this layer and see what happens. 
So there we go, we can see we've got this material now. So it's, it's quite a subtle material, but we've got some kind of scratches and the roughness and stuff like that. And that's how you use the material ingest tool. So if I go down to this, I'm gonna go down to the node graph, and if I have a look at this material, you can see that Mari has also set up the tile repeat and the tile rotation for us. So I don't have to go in and manually promote those attributes of the material. So this is a really quick way to batch create multiple materials. If you've got a lot of mega scans that you've got saved up or other scans of materials or materials you've made in substance, then you can just run this through multiple folders on your computer and it will create them all for you. Then you've got a library of materials made for you really quickly. So that about sums up this video on Mari 4.5. So we've looked at how to create, how to merge and how to ingest materials. If you've got any questions, please leave them below. And I'm gonna have more videos coming out soon. So feel free to subscribe. For any more information about me, go to michaelwild.co.uk. Otherwise, take it easy. Best of luck modeling, texturing and VFXing in general. Cheers, have a good one.